Good evening and welcome to Up South this Monday evening. We start the show with some breaking news coming from Kannur district of Kerala where an RSS leader has been hacked to death. Uh, this political killing has shocked the Kannur part of Kerala. This Remember this is the Malabar region of Kerala which is notorious for its political killings. But this political killing of coming after a long time has shocked people there in Kannur. Kannur a Hartal has been called by the RSS there in Kannur tomorrow. Let me cut across to my colleague Roini Swami. He joins me on the phone line for more details. Roini, as I said, Malabar region known for its intense political rivalries. Who does the needle of suspicion in this particular case point to? Well, here at this point of time, what they're saying is this feud that actually had gone completely awry. Here we've seen how another horrific incident of the killing of Manoj is an RSS uh, district level leader. But yes, they're saying at this point of time, uh, the police are investigating and the police are saying that they have... Uh, uh, looking at the series of events, they are talking to a lot of leaders or local leaders there because they know for sure that this could have possibly been a retaliation attack from the CPM. Like this, the reason why they're saying so, and this I've got confirmation from my source on the police, is because in um, 1999 and 1999, CPM leader P. Jairaj was attacked by Manoj, who is a victim here, who has been killed, hacked to death in his very own house. P. Jairaj in 1999, Manoj is said to have uh, allegedly entered his house and amputated his hand, hacked him to death. And now what we know is that uh, the similar kind of a situation, they threw a bomb in Manoj's house and he entered his house and again hacked him to death. Very horrific incident coming up. More, in, um, But more importantly, with the RSS chief, uh, Mohan Bhagwat, is in Kerala along with Amit Shah, who is talking right. about rebuilding the RSS and the BJP in Kerala. We see this horrific incident coming up in Kannur. Right. In fact, Roni, I was just going to ask you that Mohan Bhagwat um, has been in Kerala, Amit Shah is in Tiruvananthapuram today. Is there any kind of political significance, any kind of message that is being sent to the BJP and the RSS, which is really trying to spread its tentacles there in Kerala? They would really want to open their electoral account there in Kerala. Well, yes, that is what is being, if you have to read between the lines, that's exactly, this is a point that is being made. But, but they also said that uh, they, they did find, uh, in terms of two things, Politically, yes. They are trying to make a very clear point with Amit Shah and the BJP being there in, in Kerala at this point of time, the CPM was. And also, another right. important development that we have seen is a lot of CPM workers have been moving towards the BJP in the last few weeks. And this also has been looked as a retaliation right. because of the whole rebuilding process that we're seeing in, in Kerala. Right. Uh, thanks a lot, Rohini Swami, for joining us with all those details. A hartal has been announced in Karnu district of Kerala tomorrow. Now, news from Karnataka, where the new governor, Vajubhai Wala, has been sworn in as the new governor of Karnataka at Rajbhavan this evening. But even before he could take charge, Chief Minister Siddharamaya said the cat among the pigeons by saying that he was not consulted before the appointment. This is what the Chief Minister Siddharamaya had to say. Uh, <laughs> मुख्यमंत्री के लिए ना केयर तक नहीं रहो वो संप्रदाय है। नमः के और केयर देने मारी दर। केयर तो संप्रदाय है। सामान्य के केंद्र सरकार दार केंद्र सरकार है वो यारे ही नहीं। याव दे राज्य दम राज्य दली गो राज्यपाल ने मारो वागा मुख्यमंत्री के लिए ना कंसल्ट मारता रहा। Meanwhile, a controversy is also brewing over the appointment of P. Sadashivam, the former Chief Justice of India, as the next governor of Kerala. The All India Bar Association has told headlines today that they accuse Sadashivam of corruption. This is what the representative of the All India Bar Association told headlines today. Uh, we will be filing a writ petition before Honorable Supreme Court, uh, pointing, but after getting the total documents. But we are pointing out to the government through president of India that keeping in view these facts, he should not be appointed. Earlier we were saying he should be appointed govern, uh, uh, this Lokpal, that also we are opposing. Joining me now from Bangalore, from outside Raj Bhavan, is my colleague Ratnika Sharma. Ratnika, when HR Bharadwaj was the governor of Karnataka, he never had a great equation with the then BJP government. Is the Congress government there in Karnataka led by Siddharamaya now apprehensive that the shoe may be on the other foot? Well, today the Chief Minister's comments that he made yesterday saying that he was disappointed in the fact that he was not consulted uh, in the appointment of Karnataka Governor itself shows that the two institutions have, uh, the relationship of the two institutions has started on a turbulent note. Also, the Congress government here would be suspicious of the Governor because not only has he had a BJP background, but he also belongs to the state of Gujarat, which is the home state of both the Prime Minister and the BJP party chief. 
Right. Uh, Ratnika, moving on to Kerala, the Home Minister of Kerala, Ramesh Chanitala, has just come out saying that it is inappropriate and extraordinary, talking about the appointment of former Chief Justice of India, Sadashivam, as the next Governor of Kerala. Now, despite the objections raised by the Bar Association, whose representative you met in Bangalore earlier in the day, the centre seems keen to move ahead with Sadashivam's appointment. Now, will the Bar Association take the legal route in this case? Uh, yes, Sudhir. In fact, the Bar Association has very vehemently opposed Mr. Sadashivam's appointment as the Kerala governor and they've decided that they will file the writ petition against him and they've said that even if the Prime Minister supports and passes his appointment, they will ensure that the President does not. Uh, so, so uh, taking uh, uh, this into consideration and the fact that the central government is uh, going ahead with the appointment despite such opposition itself raises several questions. Also, the fact that the Kerala government has also criticized the appointment, uh, uh, it does show that uh, the relationship in Thiruvananthapuram also will be turbulent. Right. Uh, Ratnika Sharma, thanks a lot for joining us from Bangalore on the story of the two governors which has actually raked up a huge controversy. Now another language wall seems to be brewing between the centre and the DMK and other Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu this time over the Teacher's Day because the centre's reported move to rename Teacher's Day as Guru, Guru Utsav. DMK Chief Karnanidhi has objected and so has MDMK Chief Vaiko uh, to this proposal to celebrate Teacher's Day as Guru Utsav. Both MDMK chief and NDA ally has also hit out at the center, calling the move completely unacceptable. And as you can see, this is what Karnanidhi and Waiko had to say over this particular move of this central government. HRD Minister Smriti Rani has said that Guru Utsav is just a name of an essay competition and not renaming the Teacher's Day. An essay competition called Guru Utsav, which is a celebration of teachers. If that is opposed, then it appalls me that somebody would not want teachers who are the very foundation of our society to be revered and respected. Joining me now from Chennai is political analyst Nani Shankaran. My colleague Shisha Reddy will also be joining us from Chennai. Uh, Mr. Shankaran, if I may come to you first. The center and the different Dravidian parties have been locking horns over different subjects. First, it was the imposition of Hindi and now the renaming, the, the reported renaming of Teachers Day. Now, do you think that it displays some kind of BJP arrogance, some kind of a lack of sensitivity towards how Tamil Nadu will feel? BJP has a hidden agenda always, the Hindutva agenda. Part of the agenda is revealed and part of the agenda is never revealed. And if it did not score an absolute majority, this part of the agenda would not have been revealed. Now that it has absolute majority, the agenda is open and blatant. And BJP Sindhutva ideology believes in one religion, one language. So this one language is what they are trying to impose. And so they are not bothered about the allies now. And they will start placating the allies only on the eve of the next elections when they come. Until then, they will keep pushing their agenda. And obviously, it's an arrogant behavior of BJP. Uh, I may go across now to Shisha Reddy, who significantly joins me from outside Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan's house in Chennai. I wonder how the great scholar, the former president of India, would have reacted to this entire controversy. But do the political parties realize what HRD Minister Smriti Rani clarified that this was just the name of an essay competition and not renaming the Teacher's Day itself? Well, Sudhi, that, that, that does not seem to be uh, an issue with the political parties, but what has been reported in the papers and what has been reported in uh, all these days, uh, especially when it comes to the Guru Utsav Day, is actually uh, uh, the political parties in Tamil Nadu, including the DMK and also uh, the NDAs, its own allies, the PMK has come hard on uh, this particular move. And also uh, the NDA ally, MDMK, has also sent out a statement, Vaikur has sent out a statement this morning saying it's completely unacceptable and they can't do this. And uh, uh, a scholar who, which is something that there has been following for decades together starting from 1962 so right. this is something that they have been trying to impart the Hindu to ideologies is what the political parties are saying and even the teachers in fact because they share a very very emotional day as aspect to this particular day because they have been a lot of award functions which uh, uh, you know which goes high on this particular day on September right. 5th. 
Right. Uh, thanks a lot, Shisha. Mr. Shankaran, the DMK and the D MDMK led by Waiko have been at the forefront of raising the objections. Do you see them as essentially catering to their own political constituencies? DMK and uh, the other parties were allies of BJP also. They have been making noises, but not because they genuinely believe in this issue or that tomorrow BJP and DMK may not come together or the parties who are now with the BJP, that they will lead the alliance. They will all stick together as and when it suits their convenience. But for them to cater to their cadres, they have to make this noise. They are not genuine about what they are saying. They are not really genuine about the sentiments of the Tamil people. Everybody in politics is only doing their own self-serving agenda. Right, Mr. Shankaran, thanks a lot for joining us with that perspective. Shisha, stay on with us. We'll be coming to you in just a bit. But before that, let's look at BJP President Amit Shah's Dakshin Express. First, it was Telangana last week, and today he's in Kerala on a two-day visit to look at the prospects of the BJP's growth in that southern state. <laughs> That was all Amit Shah was willing to state to the media that was eager to know the BJP's game plan in Kerala. The BJP president is on a two-day tour of Kerala, a state the party has not been able to make an electoral dent in terms of seats, either in parliament or the state assembly. Having peaked with 71 seats in Uttar Pradesh in the general elections, Amit Shah knows that it is South India that has to deliver a rich harvest of seats in 2019 to compensate for the loss of seats due to possible anti-incumbency in North India. In 2008, the party celebrated Karnataka as its gateway to South India, but created enough hurdles for itself by indulging in several political natakas. Before Kerala, Amit Shah devoted two days to Telangana, India's youngest state where the BJP sees hope for itself in 2019. There is a considerable uh, percentage of Muslim population in Telangana and there is a considerable percentage of the Muslim and Christian population in Kerala. And in both these states there are politico-religious parties which are very active among the Muslim population in the form of MIM in Telangana and Muslim League in Kerala. And uh, the BJP would like to breed on this kind of a politico-religious mobilization which is already strong in the Muslims and wanted to create a similar kind of politico-religious mobilization in the majority electorate. And this perhaps seems to be the electoral strategy of Amisha. The RSS has also started getting active in Kerala. Mohan Bhagwat was also in the state in August to galvanize the Sangh Parivar to ensure the BJP is able to open its account in the Kerala Assembly in 2016 elections. With TS Sudhir, Bureau Report, Headlines Today. This Ganesh Chaturthi has seen a fair bit of controversy thanks to two people, film director Ram Gopal Verma and DMK leader MK Stalin. First, it was Ram Gopal Verma who sent out a list of tweets, many of them highly offensive against the elephant god and many of the devout were highly offended. Even though he apologized for it, he had done enough damage and in fact an FIR has already been lodged against him in a Hyderabad police station. And also MK Stalin of the DMK, like many other political leaders, extended his greetings on Vinayaka Chaturthi. But within 24 hours, very surprisingly, his party that wears its atheism on its sleeve withdrew the greetings that were issued on his social media platform, stating that they were the work of Stalin's enthusiastic website operators and that they were issued without his permission. Now, many have pointed out that this is hypocrisy as Stalin has fished Muslims on the occasion of Eid in the past. Where DMK failed had been that in trying to be <coughs> secular, it started greeting Muslims and Christians on Ramzan day and Christmas, but failed to greet Hindus on Diwali or other days. But Pungal it considered as a secular festival. So DMK is a kind of confused over these issues and it is only that confusion that gets reflected again. As a secular party, they should keep away from greeting any religion on any of these occasions and keep totally away from religion. That is real secularism. Shisha is joining me from Chennai. Shisha, you heard Yani Shankaran saying there that the DMK is a bit confused. But you, do you also sense some kind of a subtle shift being made within the DMK as far as it stands on different religious festivals is concerned? No, 
Sir, Sudhir, as per DMK's concern, they have been wishing for Ramzan or Christmas for the matter. But, uh, you know, when, when they say they are a secular party, they have not been wishing for Diwali, but they wish for Pongal because why it is a harvest festival, it's a Tamil festival. So they have their own agenda of saying that, uh, you know, they are festivals which are only for Tamils and also they, they wish for Tamil New Year as such and they don't wish for New Year. So there, there are different ideologies that uh, uh, the DMK has been following for, uh, for uh, years together. But on the other hand, whatever right. Stalin had now done uh, on his uh, Facebook page of wishing and extending his greetings to Vinay Chaturthi and also has raised a lot of questions. One, is he, is he trying to follow only the political food, uh, food path of the DMK or is he trying to take the ideologies of uh, DMK along with him? One. And the second one is that the, right. whatever the statement that had come uh, post his greeting is that it did not come from Stalin's Facebook page. It has come from the party itself, the DMK. So Stalin has not come out openly and, and has said that he did not uh, make this uh, kind of a, uh, a wish uh, on the Facebook page. So this raises a lot of questions within the right, DMK uh, itself. Right, absolutely, Shisha. In fact, his withdrawal has led to an outrage in the social media with many angry as well as ridiculing what MK Stalin has done. On Independence Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke about a clean India. Meanwhile, in Hyderabad, the process towards a cleaner city has already begun. Pratibha Raman has the story. They didn't want to be one among the many who would crib about garbage in the neighborhood. But never doing anything to clear the mess. When I was going through Facebook, I came across this page called The Ugly Indian, which was an initiative started by Bangalore people. So from there, we thought, why not in Hyderabad? And then uh, in, in the office, I just said this, and one of uh, my colleagues was like, I have a spot, so that spot needs immediate fixing. Then we got together, we planned it out, and uh, then we went about it, and it was very impulsive. Like, we didn't plan much and all. We were like, let's just do it, and we did it. was born Hyderabad Rising with 10 people, all of them architects by profession, all set to clean the city. We caught them in action in Filmnagar area of Hyderabad. Till yesterday this place was reeling in filth and cases of malaria was common. This group was at work since 7 in the morning. We called the JHMC but there was hardly any response uh, from them. They came here and they checked but they uh, hardly responded. But. Uh, one day, uh, in within one day's time, I, uh, when I gave an email to Hyderabad Rising, they came and they immediately saw and saw the place and uh, calculated the materials, whatever they wanted. And within one week, everything was ready, and they're here um, painting the walls and giving us a lift up for the school. While most people have been dumping garbage here without realizing they're affecting the health of the school children nearby, Hyderabad Rising decided to involve these little children to paint and transform this place hoping that this impression would change attitudes. Inspired by Hyderabad Rising's efforts, more volunteers are signing up, making the process to clean up this 423-year-old city a fun exercise. With Pratibha Raman, Bureau Report, Headlines Today. That's it then on Up South this Monday evening. News and updates will continue on Headlines Today.